Hi, my name is Marcefon, I'm a classical guitar player and welcome to a new guitar tutorial. Today I'm going to show you a technique that seems to have been a little bit forgotten but that might be quite interesting for you to know it exists in case you're playing music from the time of Aguado, Sor, Giuliani, Diabelli, Paganini, Legnani, Carcassi, Molino, Matieca, Mertz, Coste and many more really. If you enjoy my videos, please leave a like and share it with other musicians. You can also subscribe and remember to activate the notification bell if you want to be reminded anytime I upload a new video. And if you would like to be part of my private live streams at the MFA Academy, you can join as a patron and gain access to all the content that we have in our guitar community. That said, let's see which is this forgotten technique. When we play two notes on the same string, we have two ways to connect these two notes. The first one is via the normal slur, like this, and this is indicated with such a line in the score. This technique can be strong and powerful, or a little bit more subtle, yet it has quite a clear attack in the arrival note. We can also slide from one note to the other slowly, as in glissando, or we can do it a little bit quicker, like in portamento. Those are the ways that we can connect two notes on the same string, aside of course from the regular legato, just playing both notes with the right hand. For the moment being, we are going to have to ignore the glissandos and the portamentos because in the scores they were written quite differently. Yet, there was another way that it was written just like the slurs, and that is described in one of the methods of the golden time of the guitar by Dionisio Aguado, in which they had another version of the slur, one that made the slur not just a technical gesture, but also a more subtle technique that might be very appropriate for very singing-like type of passages. This technique is described by Aguado like a particular slur, and this happened with an exchange of fingers in the middle of the action. Instead of being a regular slur, like this, or like this, instead, we put the first finger and then we slide backwards with the strength on the grip and as we arrive on the fret of arrival, then we exchange for the second finger. It goes like this. Now this exchange with dust is that dampens a little bit the arrival of the, of the note that we find in here. So instead of having this, we get this is a very subtle difference, but this type of slur, that is not very common anymore, it makes the arrival very smooth. And the other one, you can feel the change of note on the fret. You can tell when the note changes. The other one is very smoothed out. Now it's important to mention that this technique was probably intended uh, for notes that are not too far away, so it was not intended as a replacement of a glissando that you can really go very far on the fretboard, but more rather like a replacement of the regular slur, a kind of a, a more embellished slur, if you will. Therefore, they described that in order to produce such a slur, you really have to count on the position of the thumb and move your wrist and not your arm because it has to be a rather quick motion. My thumb is really not changing position. Most likely they could perform this with the combinations of 1 and 2, but also 2 and 3. Maybe it could even be possible with 3 and 4. I think the point of this technique will be not only the effect, the blur effect that you can create with this type of slur that it doesn't sound like the regular slur, but also the fact that you can gain positions using this technique. What I mean by that, let's suppose that we are in a piece that we are playing on the seventh position and then we will need to reach something about the fifth. If we play a regular slur, we remain on the seventh fret and then we need to change position. And changes of position always have some effect in the difficulty of a passage, on the accents that you need to avoid because of the physical movement. And in certain situations, this new technique could be a great idea because you go from here and you land already on the fifth position. But then it doesn't become so much of 
changing positions like this and the thumb and clipping behind the fretboard, but just a one movement that brings you to the new position, which sometimes can be really convenient if you really don't want to just create some sort of gap or break in the phrasing. Because of the technical nature of this technique, I have not seen it described or being used anywhere in longer jumps. And that is because you need to have the thumb positioned somewhere and use the wrist to change, but the thumb remains exactly on the same spot. So if you have to jump positions, then I don't see how that would really apply. Then you are more going for a glissando or a portamento and we are in another story. But then in that case, this is written on the score if the composer wants this effect. Now, if you try at home this type of slur, you will realize that you need a lot of relaxation in the hand and a lot of flexibility and easiness. That's why I always insist, always be relaxed and have a healthy position because without this, so many musical subtilities go down the drain. This technique also works in ascending mode. You just need to change the fingers the other way around. So in this case, we start with the second and then we arrive with the first. Somehow discovering these little details about such composers, it makes me wonder actually how many subtleties they really were looking for and how much open for this type of creativity we players of today, we should be. And not just focus on the technical level, but understand what the music wants and what we can do for it. It is complicated to understand maybe why this type of uh, technique was in a way discontinued or not often taught or shown to the students. At least to me, nobody ever shown something like this. And I have the feeling that many teachers just uh, show the glissando and the portamentos because they are the most common found and you can see them notated in the score. But sometimes there are things that are not notated in the scores, but they are part of the stylistic characteristics of a certain type of piece. So take this tutorial like thinking a little bit outside the box and try to have first the musical idea of the piece and then adjust the technique accordingly so that you get to the result that you want. And this little technique is just one detail out of many. So I hope you enjoyed this curiosity and let me know in the comments below if you are playing a piece of the classical period, so more or less dated from 1751 to 1825, that has a passage in which there are slurs, is very lyrical and you could apply such a technique. So thank you for watching, subscribe for more content like this and I'll see you next week with another video.